Here we are at Low Water Creek, an urban stream in Metro Atlanta. We've come here to sample for dissolved oxygen, an important indicator of the stream's ability to support biological life. A healthy stream tells us we live in a healthy watershed and a healthy environment. Tara Mintz is going to demonstrate how to collect the sample, preserve the oxygen level, and titrate the sample. We chose this site because it is a representative segment of the stream reach. Plus, it has legal access and it's easy, safe, and weightable. She chooses a safe spot on the bank to lay out her kit. There's the waste jar. She will pour all of today's sample water and chemicals into the jar when she's finished. Never pour them into the stream or on the stream banks. Now she reviews the directions card and checks her kit. The reagents, manganese sulfate, alkaline potassium iodide azide, sulfuric acid, sodium thiosulfate, and starch. Two sampling bottles, the titrator, and a large glass vial. She goes to the center of the stream where it's deep enough to get her sample. She faces upstream. First, she rinses the sample bottles with stream water twice. Then she collects the samples. Watch how she submerges the bottles. When both bottles fill completely, she caps them under water. This step is important to ensure there are no air bubbles in the sample that will alter the reading. Now that she has the water, she's going to turn both bottles upside down to check. Ah, she has an air bubble. So she has to dump the water in both bottles and recollect the samples. She's pulled new samples and this time no air bubbles. Before continuing, Tara reviews the directions one more time. The next step is to preserve the oxygen level or fix the sample. To limit the exposure to the oxygen in outside air, she waits to open the water samples until after she's opened the first two reagents. Tara places the caps in the kit to avoid getting them contaminated by dirt. She adds eight drops of manganese sulfate. Notice how she holds the bottles vertically so each drop comes out the same size. Now, the second reagent. It's okay if some of the water sample overflows the bottle. The reagents will sink to the bottom. She caps the sample bottles and gently inverts them several times to mix the chemicals. You'll start to see a precipitate form. Now once the precipitate settles below the neck of the bottle, you're ready for the next step. Now we add the third reagent, sulfuric acid. It's the bottle with the red cap. Tara adds eight drops to each sample. She caps the bottles and shakes them vigorously to dissolve the particulates. Watch how the flakes completely redissolve and the sample turns the color of tea. It is now fixed and exposure to air won't influence the final readings. To begin the next step, rinse the titration vial with some of your sample water and dispose it in the waste jug. Tara pours sample from one bottle into the vial up to the 20 milliliter line. See how she holds it up to get the exact measure, making sure the meniscus is on the 20 milliliter line. She caps the vial, 
reviews the directions. Now, she takes the titrator out. This one includes a pink tip. She opens the sodium thiosulfate, inserts the titrator, and pulls up 10 milliliters of the reagent. To make sure there are no air bubbles, she flicks the titrator. She can also depress the plunger to return the reagent to the bottle, eliminate the air bubbles, and pull up the reagent again. She's ready to begin the titration process, inserting the tip into the small hole in the vial cap. Tara adds one drop at a time and mixes the solution after each drop until the liquid becomes a pale straw color. When dissolved oxygen levels are high, it will take more drops to reach this color. You may need to refill the titrator with more sodium thiosulfate. With the titrator still in place, she carefully removes the cap, lays it on its side to keep the cap clean and not lose any of the chemical. Tara reviews the directions for the next step. Tara shakes the starch indicator solution and then adds eight drops to the vial. The solution turns a dark blue. Now she reattaches the cap and continues adding the remaining sodium thiosulfate solution, one drop at a time, until the solution becomes clear. She swirls the vial after each drop to help the mixing. The solution is getting lighter and lighter. She compares the color against a white background. You might use your sampling direction sheet. It's still a little blue, so she adds more drops. If you don't have the pink tip for your titrator, you will have to be very careful. It is easy to add too many drops near the end and get a false high reading. Now it's clear and she's reached the end point. Now Tara determines the amount of sodium thiosulfate used by reading the scale on the titrator. Each line indicates 0.2 milliliters. For this sample, 7.3 milliliters of solution was used. Because this is a direct reading titrator, this number directly correlates with the dissolved oxygen level and it's recorded on the form as milligrams per liter or parts per million. Tara records 7.3 as her result. Remember, if you encounter DO levels above 10.0, you will need to refill the titrator with more sodium thiosulfate and continue titrating until you reach the end point. Add the two quantities for your result. Tara's doing one example. In the field, you repeat the titration with the second water sample. Our quality assurance requirement is that you obtain two readings within six tenths of each other. If the second sample reading isn't within that range, collect more water and repeat the process. Any two measures within a range of 0.6 constitute a valid sample. Tara's finished with the testing, so she dumps all of the sample liquids left in the bottles and the vials into the waste buckets. Cap the bottles, put them back in place. Tara takes the water sample in the waste jar back home. Her last step will be to enter the data onto the online database at www.georgiaadoptastream.org. Thanks for watching and agreeing to be one of Georgia's Adoptastream volunteers. The research you do helps local governments and researchers monitor the health of our Georgia watersheds.